Very deep in Ohio's hills lies the rusting jawbone of a mechanical giant. So massive, it once moved mountains, literally. But how did this bucket, built to power an empire, become a silent monument to an industry long gone? Stick with us as we uncover the rise of Big Muskie, the global legacy of Bucyrus and Erie, and how this land went from strip mines to safaris. In 1969, on a 125,000-acre plot of Southeast Ohio, a machine rose that dwarfed everything in its path, Big Muskie, standing 22 stories tall and weighing more than 13,000 tons. It was the largest dragline excavator ever built. Its steel jaws, a bucket that could scoop 220 cubic yards of earth, enough to fill two dozen dump trucks, in a single bite. But Big Muskie didn't dig for gold or oil. It cleared away earth to uncover coal, millions of tons of it, fuel for power plants owned by American Electric Power. Big Muskie wasn't built by just any company. It was engineered by the innovative Bucyrus and Erie, a titan of American industry founded in Bucyrus, Ohio in 1880 as the Bucyrus Foundry and Manufacturing Company and later headquartered in South Milwaukee and through its merger in 1927 becoming Bucyrus and Erie. They were synonymous with some of history's most ambitious infrastructure projects. Their machines helped carve the very bones of modern civilization. When the U.S. took over the construction of the Panama Canal in 1904, they needed powerful reliable steam shovels. Bucyrus answered the call, supplying 77 of the 102 shovels used in the effort, mostly Model 95 steam-powered behemoths that cleared 76 million cubic yards of rock through the jungle from 1904 to 1914. In just a little over a decade later, Bucyrus and Erie's 120B electric shovels tackled the brutal terrain of Nevada to help construct the Hoover Dam, one of the greatest engineering feats in American history. Then during World War II, Bucyrus and Erie's machinery was drafted into military service. Their 22 RB cable excavators played a quiet but crucial role in victory by helping build the Mulberry Harbors. The massive floating ports Used after the D-Day invasion, these portable harbors allowed Allied forces to offload tanks, troops, and supplies directly onto the beaches of Normandy. In the 1960s, the company made history again, this time in Africa. Bucyrus and Erie supplied 190B and 295B excavators to help build the Aswan High Dam, taming the Nile, and generating power for an entire nation. And in the American Midwest, their legacy lived on. Before Big Muskie, there was another giant, Big Brutus. A 160-foot tall, Bucyrus and Erie, 1850B dragline used to strip mine coal in Kansas. It was huge, but Big Muskie would dwarf even that. So when American Electric Power and the Central Ohio Coal Company needed the largest walker dragline ever conceived. They went straight to the team that already shaped continents, Bucyrus and Erie, to build the biggest of them all, a behemoth. Big Muskie wasn't just the largest dragline ever built. It was the iron giant that powered one of the most ambitious strip mining projects in American history, the Muskingum Mine, sprawling across 125,000 acres in southeastern Ohio. The Muskinga Mine was owned and operated by the Central Ohio Coal Company, a subsidiary of American Electric Power. American Electric Power needed a dependable source of bituminous coal to fuel its network of power plants. The mine supplied plants like Conesville, Cardinal, and Muskingum River Station, helping to power hundreds of thousands of homes across the Midwest. In 1967, 
the landscape of Morgan County began to change. Over 300 rail cars and 200 trucks delivered the components for a monster that would take over two years to assemble on site with totals around 200,000 man hours coming in at approximately 25 million to build. That monster became the Bucyrus and Erie 4250W Super Stripper known as Big Muskie. Crews worked around the clock using cranes, rigging towers, and scaffolding just to piece it together. Bolts bigger than fists, weld stretching hundreds of feet. The boom alone took weeks to lift into place and stretched 310 feet, longer than a football field. Big Musky didn't run on diesel. It was plugged straight into the high voltage grid. It held power. Inside its belly were 18 1,000 horsepower and 10 625 horsepower DC electric motors. When fully operational, Big Muskie drew more electricity than an entire small town, equivalent to the power usage of about 27,000 homes, leading to tens of thousands of dollars per hour just for electricity. Each day, Big Muskie removed thousands of tons of overburden, earth, rock, and shale just to expose the coal seams below. Its massive bucket could scoop 220 tons in one pass, and it did this all day, every day for over two decades. From 1969 to 1991, it moved over 600 million cubic yards of material. That's enough dirt to fill the Empire State Building 20 times over. But Big Muskie wasn't just a machine. It was a local legend. Hundreds of men and women worked around it, on it, and inside it. For many, it was more than a job. It was part of their family legacy. The mine helped sustain local towns with union jobs, steady paychecks, and investment in local schools and infrastructure. For over 20 years, the Muskingum Mine was the economic engine of Morgan County. But even Titans fall and even the mightiest machines had their last scoop. Big Muskie's work may be done, but its shadow and its legacy still shape the land and the people who once worked beneath its boom. By the early 1990s, Big Muskie, once the mightiest earth mover on the planet, was slowing down. After more than two decades of service, energy markets were changing, cleaner burning fuels, environmental regulations, and rising operating costs were stacking up. In 1991, American Electric Power made the tough decision to shut down Big Muskie for good. For the people of Morgan County, it was more than just the end of a mining operation. It was the end of an era. Jobs disappeared, the mine fell silent, and a giant stood still. The massive drag line, still intact, stood idle on the stripped hills for nearly a decade. There were campaigns to save the machine, turn it into a museum, even listed on the National Register of Historic Places, but nothing could stop what came next. In 1999, AP ordered the machine dismantled and scrapped, citing cost, liability, and environmental concerns. The Titan scrap value was estimated around $700,000, but the story doesn't end here. Thanks to passionate locals and former miners, one piece of Big Muskie survives its enormous bucket. Weighing in at 220 tons, the bucket now sits as the centerpiece of Miners Memorial Park in McConnellsville, Ohio, a silent witness to the machine's legacy and the people who kept it running. When Big Muskie fell silent, what remained behind wasn't just a hollow machine, but a hollowed out landscape. Decades of strip mining had left scars across thousands of acres of southeastern Ohio. The rolling Appalachian Hills were flattened, forests were gone, streams rerouted. What had once been rich farmland and wildlife habitat now looked like a lunar wasteland. But change was coming. In 1977, Congress passed the Surface Mining Control and Reclamation Act, 
which required coal companies to not only extract coal, but to clean up after themselves. It was one of the first environmental laws to hold mining companies legally accountable for the long-term health of the land, water, and ecosystems they impacted. The law mandated companies, in this case APs, Central Ohio Coal Company, to contour mine lands, plant vegetation, restore drainage, and sometimes create entirely new ecosystems. AEP began a massive reclamation project for Muskingum Mine. Earth movers reshaped the terrain into rolling hills. Native grasses and trees were replanted. Sediment ponds were added to protect water quality. Today, over 60,000 acres of former AEP mining land has been donated or transferred for public use thanks to partnerships with the Ohio Department of Natural Resources. This includes the creation of Jesse Owens State Park, named after the legendary Olympian, born in Alabama but raised in Cleveland. It also includes the sprawling wildlife preserve known as the Wilds, one of North America's largest conservation centers for endangered species. Where once there were only drag lines and dirt, today there are giraffes, cheetahs, and safaris. When we opened this story, we gazed upon a giant bucket in a quiet park, just rusted steel and silence. But now we know what it truly represents. Big Muskie was more than the sum of its steel and cables. It was the beating heart of a coal empire, the product of generations of engineering and a symbol of American ambition in its rawest, most unapologetic form. And while the coal has been burned, the land has been reshaped, and the drag line itself dismantled. Its legacy hasn't faded. It's growing, evolving, and returning to nature. The bucket that once scooped valleys now holds memories, lessons, reminders of what was built, what was lost, and what still can be reclaimed. So the next time you're driving through southeastern Ohio, stop in McConnellsville, stand in the shadow of that enormous scoop, and listen carefully, because if you're quiet enough, you might just hear it. The echo of iron and earth, the story of Big Muskie. If this story moved you, give us a like, hit that subscribe button, and share your memories or thoughts about Big Muskie in the comments below. We're uncovering forgotten places and hidden history across this great nation of ours. So join us on our next adventure. This is Off the Beaten Path, where history leaves deep footprints.